Brought to you by RBD Instruments. This video will show you how to operate your model DGC3 digital ion gauge control, also called the DIG3. Before we turn the DIG on, you want to make sure that your system is under vacuum. There are two ways to do that. One, make sure that your turbo pump is up to full speed. The exception is if it's in the standby mode, in which case it will only go up to three quarter speed. And the other way is to check your AVC remote and make sure that you have all five bars lit, which indicate that the system is under high vacuum. Generally, when you pump your system down, you like to pump it down for at least 10 to 15 minutes before you try to turn on the dig. When we get ready to turn the dig on, now that we know we have vacuum, we simply turn it from off to UHV. When in UHV mode, it's set to operate the nude ion gauge filaments which are typically what are found on most VI systems. The Bayard Alpert mode will operate the old glass tubes. Press the Ion Thermistor 3 button and the ion gauge will turn on and start reading. There are four set points that provide interlock protection for the system. To change a set point, you first press set point, then the number, 1 through 4, change the value, and when you get it to where you want it, you hit set point one more time. Okay, let's change set point 2. We hit set point 2. Let's change this to 5 times 10 to the minus 7. So we scroll it down, inch it back up, hit set point, and wait for the reading to come back. The four set point values are 1 interlock power 5 times 10 to the minus 5. Anything that has high voltage or filament current is plugged into the interlock power. So consider this to be your upper level system protection. Set point 2 at 2 times 10 to the minus 6 is the UHV light on the AVC remote. That's what tells the AVC that the system is under vacuum. Set point 3, 5 times 10 to the minus 7 is for the x-ray source. Set point 4, 3 times 10 to the minus 6, typically for the bakeout. Sometimes you may have to adjust that down a little bit or up a little bit. Your system will not operate if the set points aren't activated. However, if your dig goes bad and you have to send it back for repair, you can create a jumper so that the system can be operated in the meantime. And this information is available up at our website at rbdinstruments.com. The degas mode is used to clean the ion gauge. It's very easy to operate, just hit degas. The display changes to minus D and it will start counting up to 9.9. During this time, the filament current is run at a higher current and the grid potential is increased, which, which helps to outgas the gauge. You let it run up to 9.9, .9, or if you want to stop it sooner, just hit the degas button one more time and then wait for the reading to come back. The gas constant is used to calibrate the controller for a specific gas. It's usually set up for 28, which is nitrogen. On most systems, nitrogen is the predominant gas in the system. If you select gas constant, you can scroll up and down and select a new value, all the way from 99 from xenon down to 4 for helium. Here I'll set it back to 28 for nitrogen and hit gas constant again and wait for the reading to come back. The leak emission button is used to convert the reading into a sound. So you get a relative display and you'll hear a, a beeping sound that's fairly loud and it will increase or decrease as the vacuum increases or decreases. This is kind of a poor man's RGA. It's useful if you have a relatively large leak because you can go around and squirt your system with isopropanol or methanol and uh, if the leak is large enough you'll be able to hear a change in the sound. To turn it off, press leak emission, again, there at the key stuck, and wait for the reading to come back. 
The autocross feature is not used on any of the Phi surface analysis systems, but it can be a useful feature to help indicate that the gauge is working. So you select autocross and you notice that that light is blinking. That tells us that the gauge is active. The reason that's important is that sometimes if your gauge is older and you've been having problems with it, the readings may lock up and so it might indicate that you're down in the low nines or the high tens and in reality it's not. That blinking light tells you that this, the ion gauge is working. The purpose of the autocross feature is to measure the thermistor gauge reading and when that gets to a preset value it would automatically turn the ion gauge on. So if we want to turn this off we just hit the autocross button one more time and it turns off. The pressure control is not used on Phi systems, but th what that would be used for is to have a valve for, so the ion gauge feeds into a valve and it controls that valve to maintain the system at a constant pressure. Here we can select the other gauge. There's two gauges. If I select IT and now hit button 2, I'm selecting gauge 2. Well, in this particular case, I don't have a second ion gauge, but if I did, it would be reading that. Now if I go back to IT and hit 1, it will go back to the 1 gauge that we have selected, and it's reading again. So you can actually bop between two different gauges if you have two gauges with this Phi controller. And when we're done with the gauge, if we want to turn it off, you generally leave it on, but if you want to turn it off, you just go from UHV to off. The user replaceable parts for the DIG-3 include the set point battery, the ion gauge filament, and the complete ion gauge. If your DIG-3 is defective and needs to be repaired, RBD Instruments provides a repair service as well as an exchange repair where we send you a completely rebuilt ion gauge controller and you send us your old one back. You can get more information at our website at www.rbdinstruments.com or call us at 541-550-5016. Again, we hope you enjoyed this video. Brought to you by RBD Instruments.